So in today's live code session, we scaffolded an initial project, Django project. We renamed a, a few things, um, the directories and the, um, the core directory that contains the settings and URLs. In order to do that, we had to go through in all of the places and change the imports. Um, but once you've done that, it's, uh, you don't have to worry about it afterwards. Then we created one app and defined three models. So this is the app to track activities relating to, well, um, essentially sanitation hygiene, kind of um, the fundamental needs. Um, so food, clothing, shelter, sanitation, uh, hygiene type of activities to complement our other well-being activity tracker. And we want to know what staff role is doing this, not the staff member, but just generally are they um, a nurse or a practical nurse, which is um, slightly less skilled nurse. And then sometimes you might have uh, other types of uh, roles and maybe volunteers. I'm not sure if these types of activities would be conducted by volunteers, but what the type of activity was. So were they, uh, for example, cleaning, um, well, it was a nurse at all the data I've entered in here. So essentially our models are very simple. We're just inheriting from the Django uh, model and we're uh, defining a character field for title of activity type. And also being consistent across models is useful as we'll see down the road. So the, the participant role model also has a title field. And that just, it makes it easy to remember, but also makes it possible to write more generic and reusable code, particularly if you have convergent code paths across models or even apps, which uh, as the app grows, that's uh, increasingly likely to happen. And finally, we're gonna log activities. This is our more complex model, so to speak, or complicated, it's got more parts to it. Um, we wanna record the duration of activities either directly or indirectly so allowing the user to input the activity duration themselves or a start and end date time and calculating that from those in minutes or hours what the type of activity was is a foreign key that points to the corresponding table again i'm using uh, consistent names here um, to make the code easier to understand and follow and participant role is also a foreign key to participant roles so when you define activity type, cleaning is the one I've defined in a participant role, nurse, you can add an activity, select those. And let's do this one also. For a little bit and then save it. So that's about it. We also encountered a couple of um, quirks where uh, in order to print things in the user interface, um, I don't know if they're quirks, but they're just nuances you have to handle. Django needs to know how to represent something as a string. This is a part of the Python data uh, model. So we use this under str or string method. So that anytime you're representing uh, one of these database entities in a user interface, uh, in this case, Django knows where to get the string representation from. We define that in both the activity type and participant role models, as well as this activity model. But another thing that was happening is the Django by default doesn't know much about or anything about English grammar. So to pluralize something, it basically adds an S. So activities plural would be A-C-T-I-V-I-T-Y-S, which is not grammatical. So here we just tell, um, Django by defining a subclass of the model, what the verbose name for plural um, activity entities would be called. And it's able to then display it properly and automatically in the user interface. I didn't have to write any of this markup or the JavaScript um, relating to, um, if I, for example, I'm adding an activity and I want to create a new participant role such as, um, practical nurse. 
and then another activity type such as they don't administer medication but um, let's say um, hygiene I don't even know it's hygiene something like that right uh, E and E of course Once I've spelled that wrong and corrected it, then it's, <laughs> oh, well, let me make that mistake again. So 1842 and save that. So now we've got more um, data in the database. So that's essentially how far we've gotten today. And again, the verbose name plural, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the uh, verbose name plural uh, was what gives it the pluralization and Django framework is what gives us all this uh, JavaScript that automatically um, opened the modal dialog and populated this select list with the new options and selected the correct option. It's really remarkable. Unfortunately, Django administrative interface is not intended for the general end user, so we'll have to um, essentially design that from scratch. All right. Well, thank you very much for viewing this live code session. It's been uh, nice to have some uh, visitors in the chat. William, uh, hope to see you around again. And uh, if you want to view this code, it's open source on GitHub at JerryLive. GitHub.com slash JerryLive slash caregivers. I'll paste, paste it in the chat in case, again, uh, people are wanting to access the link and maybe are viewing this stream later. Great. Well, thank you very much again for your time. Hope you're doing well out there. Have a great day.